Yeah. Left at the very end, onto main square, main square. Okay, okay. Check in there, get your keys, yeah. get settled. Okay? okay All good. Have a good day. Sorry, bro. Take it easy, yeah. <laughs> enjoying uh, the uh, warm uh, nights when you could but did you notice a lot of flying ants as I said I had pulled some out of my drink uh, last night uh, they're set to hit their peak in the coming weeks with the last of the swarms emerging from their nests well to tell me more about this phenomenon I'm joined uh, by Collie Ennis uh, well known on drive time from uh, he's a zoology research associate at Trinity College Dublin and co-host of the Critter Shed podcast Collie as always you're welcome uh, to the programme what are flying ants are they just ants with wings yeah, well, they are the queen ants that are leaving the nests at the moment to uh, set off and f set up new colonies. And the uh, females and the males will leave at the moment, but the, the females are the most important. And listeners have been contacting us about swarms of ants in, in people's gardens. Is there something that attracts them? Sloan, Michael! First of all, I'm not technically a zoologist. I, I never got a degree. and I get called a zoologist all the time. But I think it's disrespectful to the people who've actually put the time in and the work in to just go, oh yeah, I'm as well just too. Because I, I haven't done that, the, that academic hard graft that other people have. So did I consider studying zoology in school? Um, absolutely not. <laughs> um, I'd read nature books and watch nature documentaries. But I never thought that, you know, I never thought I could get involved in that because where I grew up it, you know it just wasn't the done thing if you're going to do something kind of creative it was music or art and apart from that you did what your folks did well I start singing in Dublin's fair city where the girls are so pretty that'd be brilliant wouldn't it <laughs> All our government buildings and our natural history museum together. One of them actually does something positive, the rest don't do fuck all. I'm talking about the natural history museum. <laughs> so after school, I went and got an apprenticeship as an electrician, like my dad. I ended up doing that for like seven years and the crash happened. Basically half the country around our age just emigrated. Canada, Australia, I happened to be involved in martial arts and my instructor worked on security in Trinity. And he said, look, there's 
part-time job for the summer months and I'm there nearly 20 years later still. It's bizarre how it worked out, but uh, that's how I ended up in there, yeah. So we're coming into Crumlin now. This is my first school. My junior infants is there. The Loretto's. So I, when I was up until I was, well, I think it's 10. I was in there, 10 or 11. Uh, Crumlin will be about a <laughs> on a push bike, 20 minutes to cycle into Dublin city centre. Um, 15 if you're really pedalling fast. Um, I know that because I used to cycle in out of town to pick up bugs and worms to feed my, my animals when I was a kid and pick up comic books as well. So yeah, it's not too far from the city centre. I'm not talking down about it, but it, the facts are the facts. It's, um, a lot of people would have looked down their nose at you if you're from Crumlin. Demand for new houses built by the corporation Satisfied in the government specifically built these suburbs to house people from the inner city to get them out of tenements. So they basically bought all this farm land and constructed these rows of houses with very little amenities around them and just put all the families into them. But that's where my grandmother would have come from, from the inner city out to the, uh, to the house that my mother lives in now. The gardens were all open. Everybody's garden was just attached to this massive field. So you'd have like people keeping pigs and chickens and fox. Then you'd have foxes coming through. My mom says when I was a little kid and I, she'd be walking me to school, I'd be talking to crows and stuff like that. So she encouraged me with that. And she never said no to me keeping whatever weird animal I brought home. Oh, there's plenty of fields to play in and all. Yeah, you know? yeah. And there's plenty of birds' nests. Yeah, there's no birds' nests now at this hour of the year, the middle of winter. Yeah, so oh, old bird's nest. nest. Yeah. Ah, you don't. You like that too. Yeah. Good. What about you? Do you like being out here? I was the oldest of two siblings. Morning. <laughs> Morning. How are you? My sister's an actress, okay, she's a very successful <laughs> actress. And we, we, uh, we float around similar kind of people as well. Oddballs and arty types. Kind of gravitate towards people like that, I don't know why. Do you want to count spiders on this bridge? No, is that what you do now? I was doing spiders? that while I was waiting was for it? you. Yeah, bridges are always entertaining when you're waiting for people. Hi, look at that dog. Aww. I know. Any fish? Two of them, so we I feel like I've spent my life following you into places like this, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at it, it's magic, isn't it? We see all here the rebeds here. Yeah. That's where the last population of frogs in this whole park is. And we would have come to, to see them when we were kids. Well, obviously, you are much, much, much younger. younger. I have to emphasize <laughs> how young you are. <laughs> Do you remember that tropical fish shop down in Oh my God, near the Phoenix Park. And your mom's like, I went in one day to yeah. buy a little fish. And he's like, would you be interested in a piranha? And my eyes nearly fell out of my head. Jane, you remember that? he yeah? gave me a special job. He used to let me feed them and then be like, don't put your hand <laughs> any closer than this. Yeah. That was mental. Sometimes when I've done like Shakespearean pieces, I actually think of those piranha. <laughs> I do because of how Part they. Of your method acting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you know, the, remember they used to. Somebody would feel like I could be the leader today. Remember you explaining that to me. And they, yes. one Back, of them would leave, backward. and then they'd yeah, make yeah. him feel like it was okay. Yeah. And then they'd attack him. Yeah. Remember who you are. Can't like, you remember that. Yeah. I use that. I actually go. really think of that quite a lot. There's myself, my wife Ruth, my son Sean, who's 15, and my daughter Mia, who's 17, I think, because I keep getting the ages wrong because they're growing up so quickly. I remember 16 types of different beetles, but I won't remember my own daughter's birthday. So we are here a year, just over a year actually. 
I would have grown up on a council estate in Crumlin, then moved from there to Tala, another council estate where we were with the family for 16 years. So it's uh, quite different living out in the beautiful countryside as opposed to living in such a tightly packed area. So yeah, um, big changes all around. cup of tea. Funny thing about the, the milk in the countryside is it tastes different than the city milk. Um, it's really weird. It's one of those things you notice. This one's straight out of the uh, out of Mrs. Cow and into the, the carton. But it, uh, yeah, still delicious though. That's it. It's a great thing as well, waking up in the morning um, on a sunny day like this and coming down and having your breakfast and looking out at that view. It's uh, a massive difference from looking at Mrs. O'Reilly drying her knickers out the front window of her house, you know. Uh, like I miss her and all that, but you know, <laughs> this is much, much better. Can you give me a hand with getting the eggs? I don't want to run into a tank. No, something. Working taxi. So, uh, these guys and girl, well, these girls and one guy are ex battery hands. Come on, girls. They came to us featherless and wrecked because they've uh, had a life in darkness just laying eggs. There was a pet shop in town. And when you were a young flea, you'd go in there and sit around just listening to them talking and absorbing information. To the point that Tom got so annoyed, he cut off the stools on the, the legs of the stools that we used to sit around because he was fed up with people just sitting around and annoying them all day, which is fair enough. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's how it started. It really did. And it was just something then I always had a, a, an interest in and just never seemed odd to me. I don't think they're up to the normal numbers that you were expecting, but sure. No. I used to keep pet house spiders in jars and feed them when I thought they were massive, cool. I used to call them tarantulas, even though they weren't. And then when I saw a real tarantula, I was like, mother of God, this is amazing. So yeah, and then learn how to breed them. So you get your own young and rare them. and. This is Connor. He's the rooster. My mate's dad had him, and he called him Connor after Connor McGregor because he goes mental in the cage. So <laughs> he really does. And he's got those spores on his. Look at him. Go away out of that, Connor. We have guests, but it's nice to give them a little home. And we do have a lot of omelets, yeah. and I can't really cook them, but sure. You can't cook them at all. I can't cook them at all. I get nothing but abuse out of my omelets. Well. That's good, isn't it? And Connor didn't kill me, which is always a bonus. That thing won't hold them, though, won't it? Now? I thought it would have fallen through the bottom. I, of to this day, remember being in there for hours and, and looking down, and there was a tank on the ground with a log in it, and what I thought was lizards all sitting on it. They had a black back and a vivid orange belly. Like, oh my God, I'd love one of them. And I remember, I remember getting permission to get it. And I remember the guy who gave me the advice at the time was this young man with a, with a ponytail. It kind of snowballed from there. You feel very, very posh when you're having your uh, quail eggs with toast for breakfast, you know? It's fantastic. I actually love quail eggs. <laughs> and they're really good for you. They keep you young and fresh. Now, last place on the tour. My pride and joy. <laughs> this is... Uh, this is a toured rendition of this particular place. So, um, this is uh, the Critter Shed. You know, there you go, you can finish that off. Are you hungry? Back when we were first going out, there was a piranha tank in the bedroom, and I was like, mm, okay, it's a bit weird. Um, and then there was one day where I saw there was something covered in the side of the room and when I eventually looked, it was a rattlesnake. 
Well, he tr tried to convince me that he was mining it for a friend. I don't know if I really believe that. Yeah, and I was like, well, that's not staying in this room. I'm not coming back here. So I think there's probably stuff that I didn't know about. Um, <laughs> and he kept quiet. I certainly didn't tell her I had a large collection of scorpions and spiders under the bed. <laughs> that was that was not mentioned for a long time. Pink snakes, they're not, they don't mean to be bad, but they see a hand going in, they just usually assume that it's food. It's a big Colorado river toad. Big chunky oak. Call him shaman, because apparently if you licked him, you go a bit gaga. Got my frogs, a, to a lovely toad down here. Scorpions, all spiders up along here. This is an old doll's house I found in a skip that I thought would be really creepy. So I chucked the tarantula in it and it webbed it all up and it is really creepy looking. Some spectacular colours on these Mexican red knee tarantulas. Look at that. Cracker. Big. Big as we face nearly, huh? <laughs> This is why I wear the straps. So that's a Mexican fire leg. As you can see, she's blown dust up in the air, which will give me a bit of a hoarse voice. But that's the way they defend. This is Big Berta, who she's shedding. She was in a tattoo parlor, and just people were being arseholes. Cigarettes were thrown in there, and she was in a big pile of her own poo. So yeah, I got her, and she was as skinny as a rope. And now she's touching on eight foot and she's healthy as a horse. Uh, Madagascan hissing cockroach shedding its skin. When that white thing there, that looks like a ghost, comes out of the old skin, it will harden up and it will look like one of these. Quite vocal, aren't they? I, I reared these myself from their mum and dad. Boxes of roaches here. These are cave roaches. They eat anything that you throw into them. Oh, I, I love tree frogs. I think they're fascinating. I love the colours on this one. It's a beautiful creature, isn't it? See the waves and how it walks on the legs. Stunning. So how did I get involved in the zoology department? Basically people come up to the barrier and I check their, their ID and let them in. How are you? Ambulance on route for two So weeks. I met all these brilliant people from the zoology department and I'd be chatting to them about stuff and asking them about stuff. Yeah, it, it blossomed from there. They asked me to show the animals to, to students as part of the courses. Um, I don't know how many years, well over a decade anyway, um, so I've been doing that. Then one, one of the lecturers in the department was inviting me to, to a fieldwork trip to Kenya, um, I think it was six years ago, five or six years ago. How you doing? And then Yvonne Buckley was head of school. I don't know what the project was, but she said, you're going to be a, a, you're a zoology research associate from, from now on. And I was like, skipped home. <laughs> I was like, it's like somebody told me I won the lottery. Any time there's something that involves nature in the college, who did he call? Collie. Yeah. You see that for yourself. There's spiders up at the old library in between the blocks. Collie was the man who was talking about them. Money was no object. I'd be doing my uh, conservation work, science communication, and my animal, you know, care full time. Of course I would, I, I, you know, I'm not going to lie about that, but the money thing would probably be just to, to allow me to have more time to do the passion. I don't think anybody out there would, would, would turn their nose down at doing something that they love full time and having the, uh, hang on, the funds to, to be able to achieve that. But that doesn't mean I don't like the job here. How are you? Yeah, I, I'd be the same as David, no, I would know exactly what he does be studying or writing up about. But as he said, anytime you ring him, he's in a different place. He could be in Bull Island. He's up in the Phoenix Park. He's up the Wicklow Mountains. He's in Morocco, <laughs> you know. 
what Collie does with the zoology department is what he'd love to be paid to do full time, you know. Um, but he, he doesn't have a degree. And there is the elitism at large who would still go, what does this clown, like what does he think, or who does he think he is, or what does he think he's telling me to do? So we're out, we're out surveying toads. Basically we're trying to get an idea of numbers, range, what they're eating, uh, and get a bigger picture of what's going on. I'm Rob Gandola, um, I'm the Senior Science Officer for the Herpetological Society of Ireland. Collie's like my right hand man, he's the second in charge, so if I'm away or I'm doing something else, Collie kind of slots into that role and can take over. We check the drains all the time, because drains are basically uh, amphibian pitfall traps, you know what I mean? I was never a Trinity student, I'm from another university, but he's more than capable of being a lecturer. Now, he'll say himself he doesn't have the paperwork to kind of be at that level, but that's, like Trinity runs a great Masters in Biodiversity and Conservation. They, they should at least be offered him the Masters um, and then he could maybe move into like a junior lectureship, be at large in the wider world and go, I have a Masters degree, I know what I'm talking about, now you have to take me seriously. So they're common toads, so people would have them in the UK and Europe, but they're not supposed to be in Ireland. Yeah. I think that's, that's the way I see it anyway personally. Colley should do this course, get out of there with his, with his bit of paper. Is that a spider? Yeah. A little wolf spider. She's still got her egg case, that's brilliant. He'll have the legitimacy then of being, you know, a proper zoologist or herpetologist, um, and and that's kind of it, you know. That's that's the short end of it. People say that to me all the time. They say you should go to college to do this, and yeah, I do feel pressure sometimes that I should have, I should be doing it, and I should, you know, um, make more of an effort to do that. Oh my God! Big, it's a monster. Big female. A lot bigger than the ones that I normally Absolutely. used to find. Have you been eating all the other toads? <laughs> My God. That's where they've gone. That's it. Toad five. <laughs> that was so lame. Now. Let's go, Colin! Let's go, Colin! Stop! Let's do it! Know what to do! Get in there! I know Colly a couple of years now properly. He tends to do the very early morning classes, I guess before work. And you know, he's a student of the game. Every day is a school day, he will learn from anybody. So he's, he's very coachable. But what happened was uh, we have a mutual friend and I let him know I was interested in starting to keep some spiders again. I'd done it in my teens and then got busy, but I, I, I let him know. I was like, oh, if you know of anybody or you know, I can help out. And he was like, oh, I've got the perfect guy for you. Uh, Kali, he's, he's spider mad. So now I consider him probably my best friend. And uh, it's very special for me because I kind of value our friendship that it's not based around martial arts because everybody else I know is through martial arts. Ladies and gentlemen, winner, winner. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was, that was a tough, tough call to hear. Um, what happened was just one of those cataclysmic, perfect storm, this went wrong, this went wrong, this went wrong, all at the same time. It's just one of those things, one of those things. It's just yeah, something you don't plan for and it was, just, it was just one of the worst days of my life. I was potting around my vegetable patch. Um, obviously I had a smaller garden and I smelled smoke, but you always smell smoke around Tallaght because somebody's always born in something, born in their rubbish or whatever born some leaves and then I, I went up to do my my normal check in the shed and realised the smoke was coming out of the shed and I opened the door and it was just like oh my god just a punch in the stomach just you know a lot of limp bodies a lot of a lot of limp bodies um, it's loads of spiders loads of them every one of them it was just some lovely big toads I had for years as well. Yeah, loads. <laughs> yeah, really, uh, all of them marred. Like, you know, all of them marred. <sighs> Rang the fire brigade. Um, and they came out and ironically, I had done a, a little talk with them and their families. Um, a few weeks beforehand, 
So the guys who I'd been in there showing off the animals that came to the house and they were like, oh my God, man. They, they didn't realize what it was. John came up, uh, my pal, and helped me get the spiders out. You know, it's not like he has a shed full of animals that he's just a researcher on. And you know, an animal dies and you throw it over your shoulder because you're looking at the next one. He really is invested in, in from a cockroach to a giant African land snail to a large boa, you know. What a horrible way for him to go. And, and uh, the responsibility I felt for that was just, because I loved them all and uh, yeah, it still makes me feel like shit. And you think to yourself, if you had got up a little bit earlier, if I hadn't have walked that shift that night, I would have been up an hour or two earlier and I would have been out there now. I would have caught it. But uh, yeah, I, I said I'm finished. That's it, I'm never gonna do that again. I felt like my world had ended. And I, ne I always used to say to people, you know, you let these, you let keeping animals like these define you as a person. It's not who you are. And I fucking learned that day that um, those animals were a massive part of me. And, and losing them taught me that lesson, you know? So yeah, shit. I don't, uh, I don't say that anymore to people, you know? I don't judge people anymore if they're attached to whatever the fuck they're attached to, you know? Because, uh, yeah, it's a massive part of who I am. I don't know why. I can't explain it. But yeah, it was rough. Really rough. Everybody rallying around, uh, all my pals, the zoology department, my pals from everything from martial arts to me drinking buddies to people in the fucking heavy metal community to people I didn't even know. You know, people were sending me messages saying, look, here's 20 quid. You talked to my kid's school four years ago and it just meant a lot to me, it meant the world to me. You know, you read through all the messages, I read through them and it, it was, it made me very proud to know them. Like you just see these names after names after names going, you know, chin up Kali, we're here for you. And, and Kali got to see that it wasn't just me or Root. It was hundreds of people that he had touched over the years, students that he had inspired himself and they all come back in and chipped in physically, financially and psychologically to, to say, look, get up, get back on it, let's go. You can't justify it, but the only way you can go on is to make sure that something like that never ever happens again. I wasn't in any doubt he was going to quit or anything like that. That's, that's not Collie. I, I have more safety features in there than you probably have on a bombing <laughs> airplane <laughs> at this stage. You're talking to the man that goes on a family holiday with his family and goes out to find scorpions, you know, so <laughs> that's the type of lad he is. He doesn't do it because people think he's great at doing it. He does it because he loves it. Yeah. Right in the fucking nose. Here. Sometimes I'll get a call um, just from either a member of the public or somebody who knows me and they'll say, listen, I've got, I've got a, what was it, the last one? Was a, there was a snake in, a, in an apartment block. And if I have space or if I, you know, it's hard to say no sometimes when you, especially if you have a real hard look case like that. What do you say? I oh, don't know, I'm gonna leave her there, you know? <laughs> Pookie, you didn't bollocks. For me, what Collie is incredible at is his communication skills. He's probably the, I would say, one of the best communicators I've ever met. But certainly his ability to get across quite complicated topics to a regular civilian audience uh, is unmatched. So yeah, I think, I think that's his, his gift, if I can use that word. So 
him and a lab co eight hours a day and locked away from people taking minute measurements. I've no doubt he could do it, but it'd be uh, a waste. I want to be doing what I do, which is, you know, uh, the conservation work and, and, and working with the animals as opposed to like going on to doing high level maths that would not have been something I'd be interested in. So, uh, I, I am glad it worked out the way it, it did, in, in a weird way, if that makes sense. Collie Ennis, of course, who's Trinity's, and from Trinity's Zoology Department. Collie, I am about to faint. Don't I can see... Hold on a second now, don't do that. Collie Ennis, Research Size Associate uh, in uh, Zoology at Trinity College, is here to explain more. Thank you so much for joining We don't have the answer as to why this is happening, so we came to talk to Tala's very own Spider-Man, Collie Ennis. All mad stuff that I never would have dreamed I'd be able to, to do just from being interested in and reading nature books and magazines when I was I was younger. Now, you brought with you um, some friends. I have. What have you got? Yeah. Uh, little chap here. He's a toad. <laughs> you know, I'm not hugely academic, but, I, but I, uh, I'm passionate about this stuff and I'm determined and uh, I feel like I'm representing people from my background. Gorgeous. Might not, mightn't have known they had the opportunity to do what you can do. My name is Colin Ennis and I'm a research associate with the Zoology Department in Trinity College and I'm here today to talk to you about the false widow spider. Like a performance and some spiders actually, peacock spiders actually do an actual dance. It's kind of like Tinder for spiders behind the... Spinder. Them. Spinder! Yes. Better! <laughs> yes! A bit of paper isn't important, what's important is, is the ability to do the job at hand. With the amount of knowledge he has, I don't think he even needs paperwork, you know? I'd say you could write the paperwork for a zoology degree at this stage. <laughs> that's part of a, a scientific survey that's going on with University College Dublin. Look at the fish, look at the size of him. See him? Because he's such a chameleon, like, you know, he can blend into any situation, really, in fairness. We're going to be movie stars. Okay. This is unbelievable. We're going to be movie stars. He doesn't want to give up being with this person, being with that person, interacting with them, looking after the animals. Take a right and at the end go left. I feel like because I have a foot in both worlds, that it's important that I don't let either side down because both sides have taught me an awful lot. Oh, look. Here we darling. Now, look at that. My theory is that, you know, raccoons do better than pandas. Pandas are very specialised. Raccoons kind of can do, get their paws into everything and I kind of, I feel like I'm, I'm a bit of a raccoon when it comes to this kind of stuff that I do. It's pancake and George is here. I hope to be feeding frogs and chasing toads up mountains and, and doing all that stuff until I keel over. Whatever your passion is, stick with it and make your own way through it, you know? If, if the front door is closed, you climb in the back window. Oh,